Number 10. Aztec Skull Sacrifice In recent years, archaeologists unearthed a circular tower made from hundreds of human skulls beneath modern-day Mexico City. The Tower of Skulls was found at the ancient city of Tenochtitlan. Known as the Hue Zompantli, the structure measures 16.4 foot in diameter. It dates back to the 15th and early 16th centuries and is dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec god of war, sun, and human sacrifice. At least 603 skulls have been found so far. Many of them belong to warriors, while others were probably the skulls of men, women, and even children who were sacrificed to the Aztec gods. Biological anthropologist Rodrigo Bolanos said that it was unusual to find children's skulls at the site. In fact, it was something archaeologists had not come across before. Sacrificial victims were considered sacred gifts to the gods and were sometimes even seen as personifications of the deities, and human sacrifices were a daily ritual in Mesoamerica. The Aztecs displayed freshly severed heads on zompantli, or skull racks, after they were done being exhibited, the skulls were transferred to the tower. Hernán Cortés and the Spanish conquistadors he led on his conquest of Tenochtitlan in 1521 witnessed human sacrifices and were reportedly horrified by the practice. Researchers believe that the Hue Zompantli is one of seven similar structures that once stood in the area, based on the contemporary accounts of the cities captured by Cortés. They believe the conquistadors destroyed the other structures. Number 9 Nine Neanderthals Earlier this year, Italy's cultural ministry announced that the remains of nine Neanderthals were found in a cave near Rome. One individual died between 90 and 100,000 years ago, and the eight others perished sometime between 50 and 68,000 years ago. Seven of them were adult males, one was an adult female, and one was a young boy. It appears as though several of them were hunted and killed by hungry hyenas, who dragged the bodies back to their den and ate them. A collapse sealed off the cave for tens of thousands of years and preserved the remains inside by protecting them from the elements. Alongside the Neanderthals, archaeologists found traces of vegetables and numerous animals, including rhinos, giant deer, horses, and hyenas. Speaking with The Guardian, Tor Vergata University professor Mario Rolfo explained the hyenas targeted sick, elderly, and otherwise vulnerable Neanderthals. A dental examination revealed that the group had a varied diet, but mostly ate cereal. Rolfo and his colleagues planned to analyze the individual's DNA to learn more about their lifestyle and circumstances. The Neanderthals are largely shrouded in mystery, despite numerous discoveries being made in recent years. Experts don't know why they went extinct around 40,000 years ago, what our exact relationship was with them, or what their migration patterns were. Advancing DNA technology and new discoveries are greatly helping when it comes to better understanding the Neanderthals, but it will likely be some time before all the pieces of the puzzle come together accordingly. Number 8. Prehistoric Eggshell A farmer named Antonio José Nievas encountered an unexpected Christmas surprise in 2015 when he spotted what looked like a partially exposed shell laying in the mud on his property in Argentina. He began digging around it and unearthed what he thought was a dinosaur egg. After finding the black, scaly object, Nievas reported the discovery to his wife, who told news agency AFP and that everyone initially thought he was joking and laughed. While it turned out that Nievas was wrong about the artifact being a dinosaur egg, he had nevertheless found something incredible. Experts identified the fossilized egg as belonging to the giant ancestor of the modern-day armadillo, known as a glyptodont. Paleontologist Alejandro Cramars explained that it's common in the region to find fossils of the animal, which went extinct thousands of years ago. The specimen that Nieves discovered was around 10,000 years old, which makes it relatively young, according to Kremars. Glyptodonts evolved into existence around 20 million years ago. They lived throughout South America for tens of millions of years and spread to North America at some point after the two continents became connected. The creatures died out at the end of the last ice age, along with most other megafauna or super-large animals in the Americas. Number 7. Sewer Full of Infant Graves Infanticide is the act of deliberately killing a baby. It's something most people avoid thinking about and find appalling, understandably so. Archaeologists on Israel's southern coast had no choice but to confront this disturbing reality in 1988 
when they unearthed the bones of nearly 100 infants in the ancient port city of Ashkelon. The skeletons were found in a sewer beneath the ancient bathhouse, dating back to the late Roman and early Byzantine eras. It was the largest mass grave of infants ever discovered. The babies died when they were practically newborns. None of them lived to be more than a week old, and the bodies were discarded into the pit shortly after their deaths. Their remains lacked any sign of disease or deformities, and they appeared to be healthy when they died. The deceased infants were found among animal bones, pottery fragments, coins, and garbage. They weren't given a funeral or laid to rest with any grave goods. Experts believe that the babies were the victims of exposure a Roman custom of getting rid of unwanted and sick babies by leaving them unattended and letting the gods decide their fate. The Romans did not consider newborns to be fully human, and they saw it as a parent's right to commit infanticide. According to forensic anthropologist Patricia Smith, and girls were killed disproportionately because they were often viewed as burdens, while boys were valued both as heirs and for their ability to support their family in old age. Yet the bones in the pit at Ashkelon were mostly male, but why? Erotic pottery fragments and a sign found at the site that says, Enter and enjoy, suggest that the bathhouse the sewer is beneath doubled as a brothel. Prostitution was common in the Roman world, and the babies were likely the unwanted children of sex workers. Number 6. Burlington Bunker In 1955, the British government built a sprawling 35-acre underground property called the Burlington Bunker. It was kept completely hidden from the public including the local population, who had no idea that there was a top-secret bunker sitting 100 feet beneath the churches, homes, and quaint cobblestone streets of Wiltshire. Built during the Cold War, the facility was designed to enable government employees to continue working in the event of a nuclear attack. It was bomb-proof, radiation-proof, and poison gas-proof. For 30 years, the site was home to England's second-largest phone exchange, although the system was never used. The Burlington Bunker could accommodate up to 4,000 central government employees at any time, and was equipped to support them for up to three months with no outside contact. It even had its own water treatment facility and was supplied with water from a nearby lake. Designed for both working and living, the site had kitchens, offices, laundry facilities, supply rooms, cafeterias, a hospital, and more. There was also a television studio that the government could broadcast public messages from if the need arose. The bunker itself measured over a mile long and had over 60 miles of roads and a secret rail line connecting it to the main railway. But the facility was never used, and by the time it finally closed, it was being run by just four Ministry of Defense employees. Its existence was finally declassified in 2004. The Burlington bunker's future remains uncertain as it sits frozen in time. Some people are fighting to save it, while others believe that it should be repurposed. Number 5. Missing Couple Found After 75 Years Marcelin Dumoulin and his wife Francine set off on foot one day in 1942 to feed their animals in the Swiss Alps. They never returned to the village, Saviès, leaving their seven children to wonder what could have possibly happened to them. Custody of the kids was split up among several local families, and the children had no choice but to move on with their lives. The mystery was finally put to rest in 2017 when a ski lift worker discovered the couple's bodies wedged into an alpine glacier at 8,580 feet above sea level. He initially thought he had spotted some rocks, but took a closer look and realized he was looking at human corpses. The bodies wore clothing that was characteristic of the time when the Dubolins disappeared, offering newfound hope that their bodies had finally been found. By the time DNA testing confirmed that the remains belonged to the Dubolins, only two of the children were still alive. The findings brought closure to their surviving kids and to the village, who spent the better part of a century wondering about the couple's fate. How do you think the couple ended up where they did? Do you know of any long unsolved disappearances? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome content. Number 4. Submerged Settlement While helping with a pipeline installation in Switzerland earlier this year, Underwater archaeologists spotted piles of old, mud-encrusted wood at the bottom of Lake Lucerne. Upon taking a closer look, they discovered pottery and stills that once held up houses. Samples from the sunken village were dated to around 1000 BC, confirming that the city of Lucerne was settled around 2000 years earlier than previously thought. 
found at least 13 feet below the water's surface. The settlement adds a new chapter to Lucerne's mysterious history. Before the discovery, researchers were able to trace the city's past to around 800 years ago. They suspected the people lived in the area long before that, but lacked evidence of earlier beginnings. Lake Lucerne's water levels were much lower than they are now until the 15th century, when human activities and natural events caused the water level to rise. It's likely that the village sat alongside the lake before being consumed by it. Further investigation will hopefully add some insight into the everyday lives of Lucerne's earliest known settlers. Number 3. Headless Viking Pit Back in 2009, archaeologists unearthed a burial pit filled with dozens of beheaded skeletons near the lakeside town of Weymouth on the English Channel coast. The massacred headless bodies all belonged to young men. They were buried naked and in a tangled mess, with their heads stacked neatly to the side. The skeletons bore telltale signs of violence, including deep cuts to the skull, jaw, and neck. It was clear, based on these injuries, that the group was taken captive and executed by a more powerful enemy, who repeatedly struck their victims' heads before hacking them off entirely. Other injuries, including sliced fingers, showed that the men had fought for their lives while they were being mercilessly slaughtered. They died sometime between 910 and 1030 AD, according to radiocarbon dating results. During that time period, the English and the Vikings were frequently at war. Researchers were initially unsure who the brutally decapitated men were. An analysis of 10 individuals' teeth revealed that they were from different parts of Scandinavia, confirming that they were Vikings. Most of them died in their early 20s. Experts identified Norway and Sweden as possible places of origin, and they think that one person may have come from north of the Arctic Circle. While the English often lost battles against the Vikings, the gory discovery shows that the intruding raiders were not always victorious. Number 2. Persian Cup in Siberia While monitoring the melting permafrost above the Arctic Circle on Siberia's Gaiden Peninsula in 2016, a team of scientists discovered a fragment of a medieval bronze cup that came from Persia now known as Iran. Similar artifacts have been found in Western Siberia before, but never this far north, according to researcher Andrei Gusev. Researchers believe that the cup was made sometime during the 10th or 11th century and was brought to Siberia around 200 years later. It was found roughly 2,300 miles from where it was manufactured, testifying to the vast trade networks that existed in a world that seemed much smaller without modern technology. Asian merchants appeared in modern-day Russia's Upper Kama region during the 6th and 7th centuries. They exchanged their goods for fur, walrus tusks, and hunting birds. In addition to the cup, the team unearthed a bronze knife handle and a ceramic pot. The indigenous Kanti and Mansi peoples placed high value on Persian imports. They assigned ritual meaning to the objects, keeping them in holy places and offering them as gifts to the gods and spirits. They also use Persian dishes to serve ceremonial foods to the gods during festivals. It's entirely possible that more of these artifacts will appear as the permafrost continues to melt, reflecting one of the few upsides of the world's changing climate. Number 1. King Richard III's Remains King Richard III ruled England for just two years, from 1483 until his death in 1485. Throughout his short-lived reign, he managed to become one of the most controversial monarchs in British history. He took the crown by force by taking it from his nephews and having them executed. William Shakespeare famously depicted Richard III as a deformed hunchback, representing a physical manifestation of the king's depraved mind. Yikes. Richard III died in battle from two fatal blows to the back of the head. Legend holds that his body was dumped in the river Soar, but this was proven to be untrue in 2012 when archaeologists discovered the king's remains beneath a parking lot. Hardly a fitting place for a member of the monarchy. He was buried at the Greyfriars Priory in Leicester, and his grave had been forgotten about by the time the priory was shut down and demolished in 1538. A mitochondrial DNA analysis proved the remains did belong to Richard III, and an examination revealed that he was suffering from a roundworm infection when he died. He was given a proper funeral and reburied at Leicester Cathedral in 2015. Thanks for watching. Which one of these archaeological discoveries shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!